So, good morning. I hope you all survived the party yesterday. Yeah? Um, great party here in India. And uh, I want to bring you back from the future, from the lecture we just heard, uh, to the daily doing. So, I want to talk about the technology we can use nowadays without any limitation. You have seen my conflict yesterday. And um, you see, this is our daily business. Uh, for sure, maybe the future will be that we're getting a detected nodule by a program. But nowadays, um, what the previous speaker just nicely showed you, the majority of our patients coming with an advanced lung cancer situation or masses in the mediastinum. And um, in 2004, the launch of the EvoScope started, and uh, at that time we have had the success story of EvoS that we were able to diagnose and stage our lung cancer patients with the help of the uh, new scope generation where we put the needle in, and we have had tons of publications showing that in lung cancer, EBUS is the technique we should use first. When, when you go for other clinical problems we facing when we having masses in the mediastinum, the data for EBUS DNA are not as good. I just have here on my screen a review about the value of the technique when you want to diagnose lymphomas. And we all knowing that the limitation of EBUS is the needle size. Therefore, we only can take out material for cytological analysis. And especially when you go for lymphomas, we knowing that we should know more details. We knowing that we have to see the cell in context to each other to come up with the specific diagnosis. And therefore, we thought about maybe we should use the cryoprobe uh, via the evoscope to get more material out of the mediastinum. And um, that was possible since Urbi launched the 1.1 millimeter cryoprobe because this cryoprobe fits through the working channel of the evoscopes which are at the moment available. Um, so we did a, a first trial where we just uh, confirmed the possibility in the patient in, in, in a trial where we used the patients for both technologies. Uh, we published that data set uh, more than one year ago and we were able to show in that trial that for lung cancer staging you don't need cryo. Therefore, you have the needles. And we were able to confirm what a lot of colleagues published before. But when you go for non-lung cancer lesions, it's way better when you take out more material from the mediastinum than only using the needle. Um, then we just finished uh, and published uh, a randomized trial doing at least the same, another trial design now. And again, we were able to repeat in that trial, which was published at the end of last year, that by using the EBUS cope and the cryoprobe, especially when you go for lesions where you don't suspect lung cancer as the um, the primary reason that we are way better when we're taking out the cryo uh, specimens via the EBOSCOPE. Um, then it's always the debate, okay, when you take out more material, do you have more complications? Uh, and you see here the complication side. There haven't been any severe complications. Uh, the, the trial was performed in China and in Heidelberg. The Chinese colleagues have had the opportunity that they doing CAT scans after the uh, procedure that was not approved in the, in, by our IRB. So we have seen, a, for example, pneumo mediastinum um, after, the, after such a procedure in China, but they never related to any clinical complications. 
So we really can state that technology is safe and that technology is really regarding the safety profile comparable what we have seen from the classical EBUS DNA procedures. Just going with you quickly through the techniques of what we're doing, you see you have the patients which is coming with enlarged lymph nodes, and then we're doing the we going in, we're using the eboscope to confirming where we want to puncture the lesion, and then we make with the with the, with the electro knife a little incision at the spot. So we make the little incision that we are able to take out the specimens from, from the lymph nodes. We tried it even using a 19 gauge needle and then you are able to bring the cryoprobe into the lymph node via that 19 gauge needle. The problem is a little bit, little bit you cannot really then take the material out without any problem. Afterwards, you insert the 1.1 millimeter probe through the eboscope, uh, like you normally use the TBNA needle, and then you do what you normally do. You go in, you insert your cryo uh, probe through the little incision, and then you can observe the complete procedure with the help of the ultrasound, like you did that, when you, or like you do it when you use the ebus TBNA. And then you take it out uh, and then you get the specimens and just to show you, you can do that at least from every station where you have access to when you uh, see the lymph node by the EBUS probe, so examples for 4R, 7 and 11R. So whenever you have a good ultrasound access to the lymph node, you also can go for a cryobiopsy of those areas. Um, the specimens we're taking out are comparable to what you normally take out when you do transponchal cryobiopsy for the peripheral part of the lung. The freezing time is five up to se seven seconds, not as long as we're doing that when we're using the 1.1 probe for the interstitial lung disease, then for the peripheral part we're freezing nearly up to 12 seconds, but for the lymph nodes, five up to seven seconds are enough, and then you can take that out easily. In the Chinese cohort, the patients underwent the second bronchoscopy uh, three days later because we want to know what happens to that little incision, and when you would do a re after three days, you, you hardly see that incision. So the body is healing that little um, cut quite quickly. And for all of you who participated in the East trial, and Palaf Shah knows that best, uh, knowing that the body can heal even bigger holes quite quickly in the bronchial system. Um, so is the technique limited to EBOS? No, we also just published that case where we use the eboscope via the esophagus. The esophagus is even easier to puncture because it's more muscle, it's not as stiff sometimes, you do not have the cartilage, but you also can use the eboscope via the esophageal route and you can take out comparable specimens. So summarizing my talk, uh, I think for lung cancer, I still believe that the classical ebus TBNA via the needles we have is good enough to stage and diagnose the patients. But when there is a need for more material, the cryobiopsy of the mediastinum really offers us a new solution to take out enough material for the analysis the pathologist wants to do some colleagues debating that if we should do that also when we go for molecular testings for lung cancer or when you want to go for additional research questions. But personally, I believe cryobiopsy of medicinal masses will be the technology we are using in our technology when we have especially non-lung cancer lesion as the uh, suspicious reason in our Head. So therefore, I'm relatively sure the evidence for that technology will even growing. And uh, we just finished our trial where we randomized the patient into ebus TBNA cryobiopsy of the mediastinum or forceps biopsy 
of the Mediastinum, and when you join the ERS 2023 in Amsterdam, you will not, uh, you will see the data, but you can imagine that cryobiopsy will be the winner also in that trial. So thanks a lot for the attention, and go back to your units on Monday and start taking and using the cryoprobe through the ebuscope in non-lung cancer lesions. Thanks a lot.